friends, happy Advent. We're gonna get to what that means or remember again what that means in just a minute. But first, what do we need to do? Our expectations. So what can we expect from one another? And really, this is how we need to live our everyday ordinary lives, right? Yeah, so we can be helpers, we can be kind, and we can be obedient. And I have people that I have to obey, and we all have God that we need to obey, right? Yeah. So we're going to be helpful, kind, and obedient. And we're going to do our best with the help of the Holy Spirit to be those things all of the time, right? Because I don't know about you, but I don't always feel like being those things. But the Holy Spirit helps me. So, speaking of the Holy Spirit, let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for this opportunity to learn together, uh, to be reminded of this amazing time of year where we get to spend time thinking about your choice to give up heaven and move on to earth, into a human body, and how amazing that is. God, I ask that you would speak into our hearts and our minds, help us to learn more about you, about more about who you want for us to become and the things that you have for us to do. Help us to pay attention to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit speaks to us and teaches us and helps us to show your fruit. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Friends, when you have things from the Holy Spirit to share, make sure that you share them. Share them with your family. Share them um, with your neighbors. Share them with us. We would love to hear about it. Put your comments in the chat because we want to celebrate with you and we want to learn from you as well. And that happens better when we're talking to each other, right? Yeah. So let's remember, this is the season of Advent. And Advent means anticipation. And anticipation means kind of waiting. And sometimes that's excited waiting, like you're anticipating something good that's happening. Perhaps you have uh, some really cool plans for Christmas, or um, perhaps you're, you're going to get to make cookies in a couple of days. Like you have plans to do that, and you're anticipating that. You are excitedly waiting for that. Now on the flip side, perhaps it's almost time for your next doctor's appointment and you know at that appointment you're going to get some shots. And so you're anticipating that. But that anticipation is also carrying a little bit of perhaps anxiety or worry, right? Or um, you're anticipating you know you did something wrong, you made a bad choice, and you know you're going to get a negative consequence for that. And so you're anticipating perhaps even dreading. That would mean waiting with kind of bad expectations of not excitement, but kind of, uh, right? So a time of anticipation, but when we're talking about Advent, we're talking about the anticipation of Jesus. And so that's excited anticipation. And Jesus has already been born on earth, but we're waiting to celebrate his birthday. Just like you've already been born, but when it's coming close to your birthday or a family member's birthday, you're excited about that, right? And we are. And one of the things that we do when we're looking forward to somebody's birthday is you tend to think about them more, right? And so that's what we're doing. We're thinking more about Jesus and all of the things surrounding his birth. Now, we didn't do that very well last week, did we? Remember who we talked about? Here's your clues. We talked about Moses. But was he on earth near the same time as Jesus was on earth? No. Now, was he on earth the same time Jesus was alive? Yes, because Jesus has always been alive. Jesus is God. And there's no birthday or death day for God, right? For Jesus, but Jesus the human gave up heaven and has a birthday 
and also a death day. But when Jesus' body died, he didn't die. He's still alive. Woo! Mind-blowing. Talk about that some more a different time, right? But we talked about Moses last week, and Moses was alive hundreds and 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 hundreds of years before Jesus was born as a human on earth. But today, we're still not talking about Jesus because it's not Christmas yet, right? Today, we're talking about a man named Simeon, okay? And Simeon, we find in the book of Luke, in kind of that whole Christmas story in chapter 2. I have lots of notes because we're going to bump around a little bit today. But Simeon is only in the Bible in one very small spot. And he is uh, Luke chapter 2, starting about in verse 25. So Mary and Joseph are obeying the law that says it's found in Exodus, and they are taking their son to the temple to be dedicated, their firstborn son, to the temple to be dedicated to the Lord according to the law. And this is done approximately eight days or so after his birth, okay? It's also known as his naming day. And so when they get there, there's something pretty not ordinary that happens. Let's read together, friends. Luke, that's New Testament, because this is after Jesus is born on earth. Chapter 2, we're going to start in verse 25. In Jerusalem, there was a man named Simeon. He was a good and godly man. He was waiting for God's promise to Israel to come true. What promise was that, friends? The Messiah would come. And the Messiah would bring salvation for all of the people. So he's waiting for this to happen. The Holy Spirit was with him. This is a big deal because this is before the time when every believer had the Holy Spirit living inside of them like we do today. That didn't happen until after Jesus' ascension into heaven at Pentecost. Okay, So this is a big deal that he had the Holy Spirit. The Spirit had told Simeon that he would not die before he had seen the Lord Messiah. That's cool. The Spirit led him into the temple courtyard, and then Jesus' parents brought the child in. They came to do for him what the law required. Simeon took Jesus in his arms. Miss Tinky, would you put a picture up? took Jesus in his arms and he praised God. I hope you can see this picture. If not, you can find one online to look at. It's this really sweet picture of this older man, like great grandfather age, and he's holding baby Jesus and he's looking at him. And this is what he says, and it's recorded in the book of Luke. That's just so cool. He's looking at baby Jesus and he says, Lord, Lord, you are king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. My eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the sight of all nations. It is a light to be given to the Gentiles. It will be the glory of your people, Israel. When he looked at sweet baby Jesus, he knew the Spirit helped him to know this is the Messiah. That's so cool. It doesn't end there. Let's keep listening. The child's father and mother, what are their names? Mary and Joseph. Child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And then Simeon turned and blessed them, Mary and Joseph. And he said to Mary, Jesus' mother, This child is going to cause many people in Israel to fall and to rise. 
God has sent him. But many will speak against him. The thoughts of many hearts will be known. The sword will wound your soul too. So Simeon was telling them, it was kind of a, another confirmation because you remember the angel, when the angel went to Mary, said, this is God's baby and God's going to rescue the world. And he told Joseph the same thing. And then when she went to visit Elizabeth, Elizabeth said the same thing. And, but to have somebody they've never met before speak the same thing over this sweet baby? Yeah, that was a lot. So let's go back to Isaiah. And I'm gonna need you guys to do something for me. This is not gonna be a sit still kind of moment. Hold on, let me double check my verses. Um, Isaiah 52 through 53. So I'm going to read just a few verses from chapter 53. And when I read a verse that you think Jesus fulfills, okay? So these are prophecy about the Messiah who would come. So when you hear a line that you think Jesus, the human Jesus, God's son, son of man, fulfilled, jump up. So if you're already standing, sit down on the floor. And when you hear one, jump all the way up. And then we're going to talk about them a little bit. And big kids, I'm going to give you a little bit more to do in a minute. So we're going to read a few of these verses. Okay, ready? Your servant grew up like a tender young plant. He grew like a root coming up out of dry ground. Jesus grew from a baby to an adult. Okay? He grew up like a plant does. He did not have any beauty or majesty that made us notice him. There was nothing special about the way he looked that drew us to him. Jesus looked like an ordinary guy. He wasn't rich. He wasn't famous. Ordinary guy. People looked down on him. They did not accept him. He knew all about pain and suffering. He was like someone people turn their faces away from. We looked down on him. We didn't have respect for him. There were lots of people who did not believe Jesus was the Messiah. Do you remember all the Pharisees and the Sadducees and some of the other people too were like, stop saying you're the son of God. That's blasphemy. That's speaking against God. You're trying to teach lies to the people, right? We've talked about this. If somebody came and started teaching you something about God that was not true, I would not be happy with them either. I would, I would get between them and you. And say, stop it. And that's what they were doing to Jesus. They didn't understand he really was. They weren't, remember we talked about it was confusing. He didn't come the way they thought because they weren't thinking about this this way. When we look at it, we go, oh yeah, that's obvious. But it wasn't to some of them. So they didn't accept him. A lot of them did not accept him. A lot of them did, but a lot of them did not. And he knew about pain and suffering. He knew what it was to be called names and to not be allowed to play, to, to be with certain people. They're like, no, you're not, you're not good enough for us. You do these things over here. Uh-uh. He knew that. He had people be mean to him and bully him. And then that's not even talking about the pain of dying on the cross and getting beaten up. He knew pain. Verse 4, he suffered the things we should have suffered. He took on himself the pain that should have been ours. We thought God was punishing him. We thought was God, God was wounding him and making him suffer. Jesus died for you and me to pay the consequence of our sin, of all of humanity's 
sin, right? He took the pain, the physical pain, but also the emotional pain of separation from God, his father. He went through that for me, for you, for us. But the servant was pierced because he had sinned. We had sinned. He was crushed because what we had done was evil. He was punished to make us whole again, and his wounds have healed us. He was pierced. He had nails put in his body. He had that sword go in his side or spear go in his side. He was pierced. He had holes put in him for us. He was crushed and killed for us. Because he had to? Because he chose to. Because he loves us. So big kids, little kids can do this too. I challenge you, get a piece of paper or something real quick so you can write this down. I challenge you to read Isaiah chapter 52 Start at verse 13 and read all the way through chapter 53, verse 12. So we read a little bit of that just now. And I want you to mark in there, circle them, underline them, whatever you want to do, all the parts that Jesus fulfills as the Messiah. Okay? I want you to go look in the Bible for yourself and make notes of, wow, hundreds of years before Jesus. God spoke to Isaiah, and Isaiah wrote it down, and this is how it happened. This is one of the ways we know this is true, because this is hundreds of years apart. So if we can trust, if we can trust that the prophecies from the Old Testament, God makes true in the New Testament through Jesus, right? There's one more. There's one another promise that we can believe. Romans chapter 10. We're going to start at verse 9 and go through verse 13. Romans chapter 10. So this is further in the New Testament. This is after Jesus has already died, resurrected, and risen again, and he's in heaven and all everywhere at this point in the Bible, okay? Romans chapter 10, starting at verse 9, going through 13, says, Say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and then you will be saved. With your heart you believe and are made right with God. With your mouth you say what you believe, and so you are saved. Scripture says, the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. There is no difference between those who are Jews and those who are not. The same Lord is the Lord of all. He richly blesses everyone who calls on him. Scripture says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So if we can believe the prophecies from the Old Testament about the Messiah were fulfilled in Jesus, the person of Jesus, we can still believe that rescue, that promise, that when you and I believe that, when we believe who the Bible says Jesus is, and we say with our mouths, Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart, that he is the Son of God who came and he died and he rose again and he's still alive. That he forgave my sins and I asked him to do that and he did it. That when my body dies, I will go to heaven to be with God. But right now, right now, I believe that when I made that decision, when I was four and a half years old, Holy Spirit moved in. And I have the Holy Spirit now, all the time all the time. I am no longer separated from God. I am forgiven and he lives inside of me. We can believe that promise because God keeps his promises. He rescues us. 
Now, Miss Nikki, she has the hard part today. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's a really cool illustration with a piece of paper. So she's gonna do it, and I think we're gonna put the link in the description of this video so that you can see this other person do it too. Um, but I want you to practice this afterwards so that you can use it too. Yeah. Hi friends. Like Miss Lori said, we have a really fun application today that's going to help you remember why Jesus came to earth and help you remember God's promises and Jesus coming to die on the cross because God has sent his son because he loves us. So what you're going to need, you're going to need a regular piece of paper. I just pulled out some colored paper so you could see it better, but you just need a regular piece of paper. And we're going to fold in a side and another side. And look, we have a home. Because God sent Jesus to earth. Earth is our home. God sent Jesus to home. But how did he send him? Let's see here. Did God send Jesus... Did God send Jesus in an airplane? No, he didn't send him in an airplane. So what about this? Did God send Jesus? I'm gonna throw that down. Did God send Jesus in a rocket ship? No, he sent Jesus as a baby. Remember baby Jesus? And Simeon holding baby Jesus, fulfilling a promise that the Spirit told him, you're going to get to see the Messiah. And the angel telling Mary and Joseph, this is God's baby. This is God's promise. And he's going to save you. He told that to Mary and Joseph. He told that to Simeon. And just like Miss Lori said, all of the prophecies from the Old Testament fulfilling Jesus fulfilled all of that in the New Testament. And he fulfilled all of that by dying on the cross for you, for me, for your parents, for your friends, for your teachers, for Pastor Lori, for all of our pastors. He came for all of us. And just like Miss Lori, I became a believer. I accepted Jesus when I was eight. So I was a little older than Miss Lori. But I know that he is mine and I am his because he gave me that promise. And I, I know for some of you, you have accepted Jesus. And we have a baptism Sunday coming up, December 6th. And a couple of you guys are going to be baptized. And we are so excited. But if you haven't made that decision yet and you're ready to make that decision and ask Jesus into your heart, come talk to Pastor Lori. She would love to talk to you about that. In this time of Advent and we're waiting to celebrate the birth of Jesus, and if the Spirit is speaking to you, don't wait. He loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his son, baby Jesus, to earth for us because he loves us. Okay, friends, I want you guys to practice this. We'll put this link in the video for you. And we would love to see pictures of you and your crosses and your homes. So send us a video, send us a message, send us a text, because we'd love to see it. All right, friends, bye.